Central cord syndrome is the most common form of incomplete spinal cord injury, accounting for a significant portion of spinal cord injuries. It is characterized by disproportionate upper limb motor impairment, variable sensory loss, and bladder dysfunction. Central cord syndrome typically arises from hyperextension injuries in individuals with pre-existing cervical spinal stenosis, though it can also occur in younger patients after severe trauma. Pathophysiology Central cord syndrome primarily results from compression of the central cervical spinal cord, damaging the corticospinal tracts responsible for upper limb motor function. In older adults, degenerative cervical spine changes, such as spinal stenosis or arthritis, predispose individuals to injury during hyperextension events, for example, falls or whiplash. This mechanical compression exacerbates pressure on the spinal cord, particularly affecting the inner nerve fibers that control arm and hand movements. Younger patients, representing a smaller subset, often sustain central cord syndrome from high-impact trauma, such as motor vehicle accidents, without pre-existing stenosis. Clinical Presentation Patients with central cord syndrome exhibit distinct neurological deficits. Motor dysfunction, weakness and loss of fine motor control in the arms and hands, with relative preservation of leg function. Sensory deficits, dissociated sensory loss, where pain and temperature perception are impaired below the injury site, while light touch and proprioception remain intact. Autonomic involvement, bladder dysfunction, including urinary retention or incontinence, is common. Symptoms may worsen over hours to days post-injury due to edema or secondary ischemia. Diagnosis Diagnosis requires a combination of clinical evaluation and imaging. 1. Physical examination. Assess motor strength, sensory levels, and reflexes. Upper limb weakness with preserved lower limb function is a hallmark. 2. MRI. The gold standard for visualizing spinal cord compression, edema, or hemorrhage. 3. CT scan. Identifies bony abnormalities such as fractures or spinal stenosis. Early imaging is critical to guide treatment decisions and rule out other pathologies, such as tumors or vascular malformations. Acute management Spinal immobilization Rigid cervical collars to prevent further injury Corticosteroids Controversial due to limited evidence, but may be considered for reducing inflammation in select cases. Long-term interventions Surgery Indicated for persistent cord compression, instability, or progressive neurological decline. Procedures include decompressive laminectomy or anterior cervical disectomy. Rehabilitation, physical and occupational therapy to improve mobility and hand function. Over 50% of patients regain ambulatory capacity, though fine motor deficits often persist. Emerging therapies. Neuroprotective agents are investigational approaches aimed to reduce secondary injury. Stem cell therapy is another investigational approach aims to promote neural repair. Prognosis Recovery varies by age and injury severity. Younger patients often achieve near-complete functional recovery within 6 to 12 months, while older adults may experience prolonged or incomplete rehabilitation. Bladder function and lower limb strength typically improve first, with upper limb deficits persisting longer. Early intervention and multidisciplinary care significantly enhance outcomes. In conclusion, central cord syndrome demands prompt recognition and tailored management to optimize recovery. Healthcare providers must prioritize spinal stabilization, timely imaging, and collaborative rehabilitation efforts. Ongoing research into neuroprotective therapies offers hope for improved outcomes in this patient population.